impact. It was the amount of goals he was scoring. 7-1, 6-1, 5-3, and then 13-1 versus Dullan Mike in his last game yesterday. Absolutely phenomenal. He really is on form. This is going to be incredibly tough for Dr. Nightwatch. Well, as you can see, we've kicked off here, and other games will be available on VOD as well. If you're wondering about... Megabit versus Kurt, you'll be able to catch up with that game later on on VOD. And there's another game down that you can catch up with as well. Yes, indeed. If you want to watch Dax versus Tass, that will be available on VOD. So plenty of action to watch even after you've watched this incredible matchup between these two guys. For Dr. Nightwatch, it's a very tough ask. He knew what he needed coming into this tournament, a top four placement for a likely chance at the E-World Cup. And he's got to go up against F2 Tex. He's got to beat the best to become the best. And it's a tall order indeed. But when you leave yourself in this kind of situation where you're back against the wall with just 16 spots available for that E-World Cup final, then sometimes you've got to beat the best to play with the best in that grand final. But it is, of course, Tex can be playing in his familiar Liverpool strip. Shooting from left to right here, Mbappe now out wide. And I'm very interested to see how Tex approaches this game. Yeah, we haven't seen too much of Tex. Of course, we saw a few highlights. We saw he featured in the goals of the day. Maybe the goals of the day were a little bit cheeky from Tex. We're used to seeing some very skillful ones, but he was, uh, he was pulling out all the stops yesterday. It doesn't matter how he's going to score. He just wants to put that ball in the back of the net. Well, here comes Tex then moving forward. Ronaldo is dispossessed momentarily, and Hullet's going to fire it out wide now to Neymar. Slow build up here from Dr. Nightwatch, and I think he's very aware of Tex's ability to hit quickly on the counter-attack. Something he likes to do is just hold that ball and wait for that precise moment to go forward. The problem with knowing how Tex plays is Tex changes his game style at every single event because he really is under scrutiny of everyone. Everyone watches Tex. Well, that's a great ball inside here to Neymar, and this is where F2 Tex is so dangerous. The ball falls back to Rude Hullet, the shot is deflected behind for a corner here, but once he gets inside that 18-yard box, you know, that magic wand is about to be waved and you could see a goal coming your way. Yeah, definitely. And Nightwatch will be well aware of that and will try and close him down as soon as possible, not allow him to start linking up those croquettes and drag backs because that's when it gets scary. That's when you have to just suddenly start taking the 50-50 predictions. And if you guess wrong, it's a, it's a clean-cut chance and you don't want to give that to F2 Tex. And Mbappe is actually going to nip in here and steal the ball and you can see him lunging in to try and beat the defender. So maybe get a second piece of it there, but Nightwatch now looking to release Kylian Mbappe just over hit down the line, though. And interesting to see both Nightwatch and Tex here looking to utilize that long ball in behind the fullback. I think that's important, especially against Tex. He does bring those fullbacks up aggressively to try and win the ball. So if you do play that long ball over the top to the right or left hand side, you generate quite a lot of space, but Tex is actually tracking those runs very, very well at the moment. Well, sort of a half tackle there, Virgil van Dijk steps in to make sure that is a full tackle and possession one back here as Danny da Costa is going to release Kylian Mbappe. A beautiful touch there from the Frenchman, but Virgil van Dijk, he now steps in for Nightwatch to win the ball back. An important role that maybe we've not spoke about just yet is the coaches that are standing behind these two players and Lyrics especially, who is coaching Nightwatch. I think he has a big role in this game. Nightwatch was very frustrated in games yesterday. Uh, not, not what I'm used to seeing from Nightwatch. He's usually quite calm, quite collected, knows exactly how he wants to approach a game. He lost his call yesterday. That can't happen in this game. Well, Neymar now might be looking to create the first chance here. You see the little scoop up and the ball tossed into the box there. But going back to what we were talking about yesterday, Dan, maybe we haven't seen quite as many of those crosses into the box, the likes of Danny da Costa and Ramos Varane. And those fullback positions seem to be dealing pretty well with it. Yeah, I'm not surprised that as soon as any fullback that has a little bit of height is introduced to the game and has good statistics on a foot item, it's instantly tried by all pros because they want to have some form of counter to Cristiano Ronaldo, etc., at the back post. Of course, it's not going to work 100% of the time. We even saw some goals where Neymar was winning headers over right backs yesterday, which is beyond me, but it still happens. But you want to put yourself in the best chance as possible. Well, there's a fantastic little tap call from Kylian Mbappe. Now Ronaldo's inside the box! And it's always a surprise to me to see the green arrow not light up there from Tex. Big chance for him. Secondary phase of play now. Ramos has to get up and get it away, but a huge chance in the 30th minute there for F2 Tex, and he didn't take it. That's an opportunity wasted for sure. I mean, we're not actually used to seeing Tex go up in first legs that often throughout the history of FIFA 19. We see him go 2-0 down so much, and often players are like, 
I don't get why when he goes 2-0 down, he becomes a different player. Even speaking to his mum, she was like, what? She asked me. She said, why does he go 2-0 down? Does he get an advantage? I went, no. I just don't know what it is. Well, he just struggles. Before he goes two down, Nightwatch has got to get the first goal on the board. Still nil-nil here. 35 minutes gone in this game and only that one chance to really talk about. But look at the players flowing forward for F2 Techs here. Neymar tries the early ball across the 18-yard box, unfortunately. Just into the area for Edwin van der Sar to come out quite comfortably there and collect the ball. Another chance on the counter-attack there for Tex, though. Yeah, another chance that's gone begging, and you saw the frustration on the face of Tex and the sigh of relief from Nightwatch as well. It's whether Nightwatch can do anything on the counter. Well, here's Ronaldo, lays it back to Mbappe. First real shine anger there from Nightwatch. And again, no green timing on that one. Maybe just got to get those fingers warmed up a little bit here. Yeah, nerves I'm sure will come into play because there's so much on the line here for Nightwatch. And if you're wondering and saying, well, what does Tex have to play for? He's already qualified for the E-World Cup. He's number one. He's got so many Global Series ranking points. 75,000 if he wins this event. You want that money. Well, here's Mbappe powering away from Varane for just a moment before the Frenchman managed to get back inside his man there. And, oh, Neymar's almost dispossessed him. And Ronaldo has done. Chance here, Nightwatch might be the creator of his own downfall, but no, Sergio Ramos in the way once more. And it deflects off the Spaniard for a corner, which will be cleared away momentarily. Eusebio gives it away here, Hullet. They're going to pull some strings here. Vieira manages to find a ball around the corner on the stroke of half-time now, last attack of the game for F2 Tex. You can see him smartly now recycling the ball. Waiting for that moment to strike. Ooh. A little deflection there off Patrick Vieira and all that good work is going to be undone very quickly. Yeah, I don't think Nightwatch is going to have an opportunity to attack here, but I wanted to comment on how well Nightwatch has been defending, how well he's been jockeying, switching players, keeping Tex at bay, not allowing Tex to get into the box, get into those danger areas. It's been the quick paced switching from Nightwatch, which has seemed to frustrate Tex a little bit in that final third. But Tex has created chances. That's the one thing that he can look at from this first half. Yeah, I'd say there was one big chance either side, to be honest with you. We saw that one shot on target from Tex, which tested the goalkeeper. Again, didn't get the green time finishing on the finish itself. And at the other end, you could say exactly the same about Nightwatch. Had that one chance of Mbappe from the top of the box, but didn't get the time to finish in to maybe test the goalkeeper as much as we would expect. However, a very tactically astute battle from both players there, Dan, and something we wouldn't be surprised about from their history. Yeah, I think when you've played a player several times and you've practiced against them, you've analysed them, you've watched them, you are going to know how they like to score. So naturally, you're going to try and defend more in those areas. So you need to be aware of their backup, their, their plan B. And we know that Tex is very good at adjusting to gameplay. We know that he, he can read his opponents and then suddenly he brings out something a little bit different. So as we get into the second half and especially the second leg, I expect Tex to try some new things, maybe a couple of crosses to the back post. Maybe he's going to start bringing out a few more skill moves. Second half underway then in our first game here in the round of 32 on day number two here in Hamburg at the Global Series playoffs. And the one thing that's worrying me a little bit I've seen a few times from Nightwatch in that first half is just giving the ball away when he's not really under any particular pressure, but maybe he might have a shot from distance here, but it's those little mistakes we saw yesterday, Dan. A little pass out of the back that you kind of take your eye off the ball a little bit it can cost you an opportunity, a goal. It can. You have to really be switched on. We, we say countless times that FIFA is a mental battle as well as a very skillful one, so you need to make sure that you are on the ball. I like that Tex is... He's not applying too much pressure in the final third on Dr. Nightwatch. He's almost encouraging shots from outside the area. Ronaldo is going to be impeded in his progress towards goal here. And I tell you what, Virgil van Dijk has some fantastic free kick stats on him as well. However, he's going to be laid off here. Looks like it will be taken short. Ronaldo runs over the ball. Hullet tries to take it first time. It's almost that kind of free kick routine has almost become a little bit predictable now. It has. It's frustrating to watch sometimes because me as a football fan, I'm sure everyone watching, you want to see a direct <laughs> free kick attempted. We've seen some incredible ones scored. One of my favourites from the e La Liga finals, the virtual La Liga finals. That was absolutely phenomenal from R9. But at the same time, we know how well it can work when you get that layoff and a defender doesn't get in front of the ball and you get that shot away, you can slot one into the back of the net. So... I understand why they're going through it, and of course I'm not going to argue against the best players in the world, but sometimes, just sometimes, I want to see something a little bit different. Yeah, the most one that sticks out in my memory was the one that made France fans very happy with Iceland banging it into, Finland, excuse me, banging it into the top corner. 
I almost lost my voice on that one, didn't I? You did indeed. However, still a very cagey affair here, but where's one of those little mistakes? Neymar's going to beat his man to the ball. And deep breath there, a sigh of relief from F2 Tex. Deflected away now, corner to Nightwatch. And Nightwatch shrugs and says, all right, I'll take a corner. I probably shouldn't have shot there anyway. Eusebio into the box, Van Dijk. One player who certainly can contest Cristiano Ronaldo in those aerial battles. He wins it here, but possession still with Nightwatch. Yeah, this has been a good spell for him. As I say that, he gives the ball away, but he needs more possession. He needs to get Tex off the ball to try and just apply a little bit of pressure and maybe put a seed of doubt into Tex's mind of, hey, actually, Nightwatch is doing well here. He's really keeping me at bay. I'm struggling. Nightwatch probably wants to force Tex into plan B because Tex's plan A is always the best plan. Well, that's the first time we've really seen Tex beat one of the fullbacks here. Mbappe managed to get away from Ramos. And now you've seen him progress up the pitch just a little bit here. Vieira. Pull it, striding forward into that space. Neymar, Cricketta, fake shot. Beautiful stuff here from Tex. Tries to get the shot across goal, but just can't beat the frame there of the imposing figure of Virgil van Dijk. Both Tex and Nightwatch actually are defending well enough that they're encouraging their opponent to shoot from areas that they're not very likely to score from, from outside the area, from just inside the area when their body's in the way. So they're both defending very successfully. However, if they get too comfortable in those areas, if they just assume they're going to be able to continue defending this way, their opponent might be able to surprise them with a skill move and then suddenly it's going to be a clear-cut chance. So they have to be switched on and they have to make sure they don't just uh, get too reassured with themselves. They don't get too comfortable in this, in this scenario. Both players, one thing that's sort of fascinating me about this game, especially on the side of FG Tech, is that their build-up play seems very slow, very deliberate, very risk-free. And something with Tex, we know he likes to get the ball forward very quickly. We see a substitute coming in here for Dr. Nightwatch. We'll go back to that point after the, the corner is going to be taken and a potential chance created. Van der Sar will come out and get a punch on that one. Julian and Ronaldo both fighting for the ball and Tex will come away with the ball now. Beautiful little dummy there. It's going to give Mbappe maybe the chance to work this inside the box. Ronaldo gave it away initially, but Ronaldo... Cristiano won it back, dragged back here from Tex, chance to shoot, and there's the goal! And that's how exploitive Tex can be! And it's very hard to shake someone's hand when they have a pen in that hand as well, we do find out, but that's finally the breakthrough we needed to open up this game. You were talking about how slow, how methodical it is, and the reason being, Nightwatch knows that Tex is on his best when he's counter-attacking, when he can play quick FIFA. So if Nightwatch slows it down, Tex has to slow it down as well. But eventually, we get something. We get the chance for this game to open up. And now I think we're going to start to see some goals rattle in. And it's another perfect example of how effective the simple drag back can be. After that initial backwards movement, you can move pretty much any direction afterwards. It's so difficult to predict where that striker is going to turn and try and get that shot away, create that angle for the shot. And you have to say again, it wasn't perfect, the timing there from Tex, but it was good enough to beat the goalkeeper. It was good enough. It was the more the position that he got in, so he was rewarded for that. And he's only got 4% more possession as well, so I'd say Nightwatch has done very well to keep in this game, and he is very much still in this game as well. Just one goal difference after 72 minutes against Tex, the best in the world, who hammered Dollar Mike 13-1 yesterday. He's doing all right. Oh, and he did get the timing green there. Neymar, though, really didn't get that ball. Right up into the top right-hand side of the goal there, where he was obviously aiming. Maybe not quite enough power on that shot there from Nightwatch to trouble the goalkeeper. But he did create the chance. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't take it. And just a reminder to everyone who's watching right now, Nightwatch quite simply needs to win this battle here against F2 Tex to have a chance of making the E World Cup final. So, so much more pressure falling onto his shoulders. I mean, this is just the first hurdle, and it is quite simply a massive hurdle as well. He has to beat Tex, otherwise he's out. His season is over. He won't be able to qualify for the E-World Cup. Well, Tex is looking to add a little bit more misery here to Nightwatch and make that task even more difficult. Neymar, though, steps in, and now the Brazilian can step away, and he does step away from Rafael Varane. However, if Nightwatch were to win, and if he were to progress into the top eight, he does have a chance of finishing in the top 16. Top eight would take him above the likes of Zidane. Zidane, who went out yesterday, won't be able to secure any more Global Series ranking points. So he's really looking at that top eight, but to guarantee it, he needs top two to make it likely probably top four. But I'm sure he'll be thinking about that after this matchup. Yeah, you don't want to be leaving it other people's hands. You want to do it all yourself. If you know what you have to do, you've got to have the mentality to just go out and do that. 
And whilst Tex doesn't need to do anything, he's going to be first seed at the E-World Cup. It's not just about the prize money that I spoke of earlier. It's also about just asserting dominance, carrying on this incredible season and showing that he's the number one over MS Dasari. Well, Mbappe here recycles the ball to Danny De Costa. Kind of seems to have locked down that fullback position. The young German, Neymar now tries to squeeze Ooh, okay. that ball into Ronaldo. Didn't quite find his target. And now with 87 minutes left on the clock, of course, this is the first leg here. Nightwatch has one more chance, maybe, just maybe, to build an attack and level this up before we head into the second leg. Yeah, he's going to take his time here. He's going to pass this around to make sure it is actually the final attack. So he either goes in 1-0 down into the second leg or he has a chance and maybe can equalise. Just needs to be very careful not to give the ball away in any dangerous areas. But that's a great ball onto the left-hand side. Oh, just a little step over there trying to fool Virgil van Dijk. Nightwatch still with possession here in the final third as well. Mbappe into Bale. Vieira steps away from one challenge, but again, just a little bit of a loose pass here. And there might be just a few moments left here for F2 Tech to look to release Neymar. However, the referee brings the game to an end, and the man on your screen, F2 Tex, will take a 1 0 lead in towards the second leg. And it was a very close game, a very closely contested game indeed, uh, as we were expecting from two players who know each other very well. Nightwatch put up a really good battle, but for me, didn't create enough chances in the final third Nightwatch. Tex had chances to go two, maybe three nil up if he had hit a few time green shots a little bit earlier. So Nightwatch needs to be aware of that. He needs to step up his game when he's starting to attack. Well, let's check out the highlights from that game. Uh, there wasn't too many to speak of, obviously, with just the one goal to separate the two players, but you will see some of those chances that maybe were squandered a little bit by both players. We were putting it down to maybe a little bit of nerves, maybe the gravitas of the situation, especially for Nightwatch. But there was the goal. Again, just that simple drag back and the little change of direction into that space. Beautiful stuff again from F2 Tex. And I think that he's going to be a little bit frustrated, Nightwatch, with that goal in particular, considering how well he was defending throughout that game. When Tex actually went for that drag back, Nightwatch switched one of the players. His That player was actually out of position. If he had stayed maybe with Van Dyke, he might have been able to stretch a leg across. So I think if he looks back at it, he'll say, I could have done a little bit better. But unfortunately, you can't defend perfectly throughout an entire game of FIFA. You know, everyone else watching knows. Nightwatch did pretty well to keep that at just 1-0 after a first leg. Yeah, I would completely agree with you. But now we've got to see something different coming out from Nightwatch. We've got to see him uh, turn up the pressure a little bit, I believe, in this second leg onto Tex. Because you just feel the longer this game goes, you always know that Tex has got that one chance up his sleeve to create a chance and create a goal. So I just feel... Next goal's huge. In the, in the complexion of this tie, in the complexion of Nightwatch's season as a, as a whole, over 12 months, it, it, this is it for him. He needs to be the player who scores first. My worry for Nightwatch fans is that when Nightwatch starts to get a little bit faster in his gameplay, it's going to allow Tex to get even faster with his gameplay, and that's when he excels, when he can play a little bit faster, when he plays counter-attacks. Well, listen, speaking of gameplay and stuff, let's talk about game management, because F2 Tex is obviously someone who's learned a lot this year. We can see a little quote coming in from him as last season. I had a really... I had a reputation as a really good attacker. This year, I know how to manage the game better. If I'm one up with 20 minutes left, I'm confident playing out the game defending. As a whole, I feel I'm, I've improved. And I think that every single player who has watched this young man become a man this year with some of his performances would completely and 100% agree with that quote. He's matured, not only in age, but with his gameplay as well. He knows what he needs to do to get a, a victory. And throughout different iterations of FIFA, it's different whether how easy it is to keep the ball. I'd say in FIFA 19, it can be quite difficult to keep that possession and play it around and how dangerous it is. So you need to be able to manage it effectively whilst not giving your opponent chances, but maybe creating some chances for yourself. But also on the other side, for Nightwatch, he needs to make sure that he gets back into this game and doesn't allow Tex to have too many chances, which is very difficult because naturally his formation is now going to get a little bit more aggressive towards the end of this second leg, which will leave him somewhat vulnerable at the back. I, I completely agree with you. It's kind of that chart. We always talk about, you know, when are you looking to pull the trigger as far as, you know, the, the change of, of tactics is concerned when you go for those more attacking formations, more atta attacking instructions on your players because it is a risk. It is, you know, you leave yourself open, as you're saying, for Tex to really exploit that space, especially in those fullback areas with the pace of Mbappe, with the pace of, of Neymar, for example. And, you know, the thing is, even when you've got rid of them now, maybe they have stamina forwards, you've got the likes of Havertz to come on the pitch. It, it's such a tough task. You have all the tools now. You can do absolutely anything you want as Tex does return to the stage. Tradition, right? Signature bathroom break, as he always does at halftime, just to calm himself down and just to get himself mentally prepared. I think it's very smart, to be honest. Uh, some people would argue that if you are winning, you shouldn't take a break. You should carry that momentum into the second leg. But I think 
we can't really argue for the fact that it's a mental it's reset. For text yeah, exactly. Throughout it's a, this season, it's a mental reset, and we talk about. You know, FIFA 19 as an eSport, the games themselves aren't that long, but they are so mentally encapsulating for all these players. They drain you so quickly of all of those energy reserves that go into it. It's such a game of focus and not making that mistake that sometimes just taking a few minutes to take yourself away from the situation, get yourself outside of the lights and the, you know, the screen that's in front of you. It's a smart thing to do. Well, whilst we're waiting for these two to get underway, I can update you from some matchups elsewhere. Uh, Ryan is 3-0 up versus Rafsu Tassari beating Rodrigo 3-2. Levy 5-1 up versus Senna. Levy's a beast, by he, the way. He's been playing beast. phenomenal. Uh, Tass is drawing 1-1 with Dax, and Dullam Mike is 2-0 up against Crafty. So those are some results elsewhere after the first leg. Well, incredible stuff from some of those other games, some of those results. Of course, we'll keep you all up to date as quickly as we possibly can. So make sure you don't mix out on any of the action. As we said earlier, some of those games will be available on VOD later today. But let's talk about the, t the coaches, because you kind of touched upon it a little bit, Dan, uh, during that game. Let's start off with Nightwatch and Lyrics, because that's kind of a relationship that's developed throughout the season. They were sparring partners as far as their practice regimes were concerned. And now, you know, Lyrics is sat behind Nightwatch, giving him that vice, those little words in his ears. What would you think of Center at this point? Uh, honestly, just keep playing your own game. You're only one, nothing you're, right yeah, you're only one goal behind. And it sounds weird, but sometimes for a coach, your job isn't to say something right now. Your job was to say something before the game and just to let them play it. Of course, some players do like to have a little bit of inspiration behind. They like to be hyped up a little bit. Maybe they need to be told to calm down. Give them the rocky speech. Sometimes you just need to listen. And Nightwatch definitely is a talker. He definitely will talk at his coach. I'd love the rocky speech in my ear. Get me all fired up for the game ahead. But here we go. I'm fired up already. It's time for the second leg. Nightwatch chasing the game. 1-0 down against the world's number one F2 Tex. Of course, on the Xbox. And overall, as far as points are concerned, across both consoles. But here we are. Dr. Nightwatch's season very much on the line. But he's done it before. The question is, can he do it again? His name on then for Tex. Stepping forward. Vieira coming to assist his teammate. And again, slow, deliberate build-up here from F2 Tex. Little fake Rabona. Little Elastico. Ronaldo now with the ball inside. Hullet, great pressure here from F2 Tex. This is where he's dangerous. Takes that shot. Nightwatch backed off for just a second there, Dan. Almost allowed Ronaldo. Somehow Mbappe's kept that in. He's almost teasing it. It's on a string here. Vieira across to Ronaldo. And it's like he has Velcro on the end of his boots at times. F2 Tex. Magic from the young man. Not the start. He wanted to see if you are a Nightwatch fan. But at the same time, this might just open it up a little bit. This might encourage Nightwatch just to get really aggressive now. And in the history, the players that we have seen beat Tex aside from Nightwatch are typically aggressive players, players that don't give Tex the space, players who don't give Tex the time to think. And maybe he might struggle. And just to correct myself earlier, I said the game between Rafsu and Ryan, that Ryan was winning. It's actually the other way. Rafsu was winning 3-0. My apologies. Well, that goal from F2 Tex might be well seen in the Adidas plays of the day later on. The way that he built up that play, the way that he... Use those skills of Kylian Mbappe to silkily slink his way into the box. Cannot be understated. Now Nightwatch. I mean, it was a tall order before. Ooh. And we said how important that first goal could be. Can he answer back quickly here? Gareth Bale attacking into Virgil van Dijk. But, I mean, of everything that Nightwatch could have done there, he just showed the ball straight to the centre-back. And that was a... It was easy pickings there for Virgil van Dijk. Just played into the hands of Tex. Tex had the early read, knew there was going to be a skill move, so he just backed off a little bit too much. And uh, Nightwatch, he just didn't read it. And unfortunately, Tex is going to take full advantage of that. And this is where he's been dangerous before, just waiting for those spaces to open up. Ronaldo now into Mbappe. This is where the goal came from before. Instead of attacking that byline, he's gone back inside here. R9, five-star weak foot, so difficult Ooh. to defend, and he's just been upended there by Virgil van Dijk. And a chance here for Tex. Will he go short again? Stepped over by Ronaldo. Hullet lines up to strike it. Defenders in the way again for Nightwatch. It's not going to work. You saw Nightwatch just remove several players from the wall. He knew that there was going to be the layoff across the Hullet. So he was able to get those players out of the wall and then just rush down and make sure bodies were in the way. Of course, there's always a chance for a deflection, but a good read from Nightwatch. And of course, that research paying off. Well, there's a bit of space here for Neymar. And he's managed to find the ball back. And Ronaldo has the striker goal. The defenders in the way. And I think, I think that Nightwatch 
And put that one near post as well. Tex had gambled with his goalkeeper movement across goal, so that could have been an opportunity, but for that block. Mbappe now takes the strike, deflected off of two players who are kind of throwing themselves at the ball there in the centre of the box. Difficult for Nightwatch to get past that. But again, every shot that Nightwatch is taking is being hit. It's a Liverpool shirt is in the way, and Nightwatch needs to get more clear-cut opportunities if he wants to get back in this game. However, the pressure from Nightwatch is really starting to be turned up here on F2 Techs. That's three or four opportunities. He's had to really go forward oh, there, but boy. that's just a loose pass, and maybe that's just that mental focus after those last couple of chances didn't go his way. Just slipping just for a second there for Nightwatch. Oh, amazing play by both Tex and Nightwatch there, which has just created this chance for Tex. I'll talk about it in a minute. Well, here's Ronaldo, turns back inside. Again, patience here, but Ronaldo steps in. He's stolen the ball here for Nightwatch. So Tex was tracking the, uh, sorry, Nightwatch was tracking the one into right back, and Tex was like, okay, I'm not going to be able to play this ball. But then as soon as he saw the switch from Nightwatch, then he played the ball to generate that chance on the left-hand side. So it was great first initial reactions from Nightwatch, but even better counter reactions from There's Tex. There's space here, and Neymar's in there, and he just couldn't squeeze himself between Van der Sar and the ball to try and make some contact to beat the goalkeeper. And I just wonder, if maybe the ball outside was the better ball there than the one looking for Neymar, there was space on the other side of the area there for the player who was charging in. However, Nightwatch really is knocking on the door here. The pace of the game has changed here, Dan. Yeah, I think naturally it is going to speed up a little bit more, but as I mentioned in the first leg, sometimes that does play into the advantage of F2 Tex. Well, here's Mbappe, and he's got away from his man. Inside the 18-yard box, went for the quick, driven ball back across goal there, defended by Nightwatch. What has Tex? Got up his sleeve here, tosses it into the box, Ronaldo goes up! Oh, what a save. What a save from Van der Sar. And you need that if you're Nightwatch. If you go 3-0 down here, I think you're going to really struggle to come back into the game. But at two, I think you still have a chance. Mbappe wins it back, takes a shot from distance, and Van der Sar, I mean, he deals with it. And De Costa keeps it in and keeps possession, most importantly, here for Nightwatch. Yeah, if that had gone out for a corner, I think Nightwatch would have been a little bit frustrated. But now he's got possession, but he throws it away. Just tossing it to hull it in the middle of the park. You need to do better there, and you can see the visual frustration on Nightwatch's face. Well, here's Ronaldo then for Tex. He's got it on that right foot as well. You can't back off for too long and give him that space. He will make you pay. Second wave of the attack now. R9. Oh, we went for the little roulette after the drag back, and now a chance to counter-attack here for Dr. Nightwatch. He needs to make the most of one of these chances, Dan. He's got so many men streaming forward as well. Maybe too many options to pick from. Eusebio tries to find Ronaldo, and again, it's just a matter of inches. Those passes just falling into the hands of Van der Sar instead of the on-rushing striker. Nightwatch just needs one. He needs one of those chances just to be enough to actually get a shot away at a goal. If he can make this 2-1, he's straight back into it. Ooh, Varane had to get there, and Van der Sar will come off his line to clean up there, but that was a little bit scary there, that moment for Nightwatch. But Nightwatch has to take more risks, and he knows that. And it's either going to be, I go 3-0 down here and I lose the game, or I take a risk, I'm rewarded for it, and suddenly I'm 2-1 up. So he might make mistakes here, but of course he's making them for a reason. That's a great ball, though, from Rude Hullet. Neymar now goes towards that back post, and Gareth Bale has to... Bring up his old circus training to get that one away. Great acrobatics there from the Welshman, and it had to be. Cannot confirm or deny if Gareth Bale did true. actually have circus training, but you never know. As the first half coming to a close, but it's still Tex piling on the pressure. Halftime whistle does go, Mark, and I feel like now with this last 45 minutes, Nightwatch has to go to plan E or D or whatever plan is available. There is just throw everything think, at Tex. I at think this it's planned no respect to this point. You know, forget about who you're playing against. You just have to. And I think this needs to stop as well. You can see he's complaining two lyrics and like i said sometimes you just talk at your coach and sometimes your coach but listens yeah but is that good is that a good thing to do when you're two nil down in one of the most important games of your uh, of your season you don't want to be complaining you want to be focusing up and you want to be saying what you can do to win this game not what has happened prior to that yeah i don't think the as i say you can't really complain about the goals that have been conceded uh he's been a little bit unfortunate maybe with some of the chances that he's had with the you know the defenders positioning themselves in a way that They've managed to get you know, themselves in between the ball and the goal, but we'll take a quick look at what Nightwatch has said on some of the quotes that he said in regards to the tournament and everything that's going on at the moment. 
Let's just sum it up, Dan. I mean, you take it away this time. Well, what's at stake here in Germany is a spot for the E World Cup, and that's the most important thing in my eyes, as the same for everyone who's been competing here. Uh, I think it was a tweet we saw earlier that the standard of players at this event has been phenomenal. It's so difficult to get out of Swiss, let alone get far enough to even qualify for the E World Cup. Nightwatch knows what's on this game. He knows how important this is, but he knows that he put himself in this situation by not performing as well as maybe he could have in Swiss. So now he has to beat Tex. He has 45 minutes to do so. He can do it. He has the potential if he focuses up, if he maybe a little bit of luck on his side, we might see him get back. You just can't think game. about what could happen negative wise. You've got to think about how good it will feel if you turn this game around against the best in the world. If you can do that, then that belief is going to stay with you, not just here in Hamburg. That is going to flow through to the finals. And you've got to keep that in mind. Here we go. 45 minutes left. F2 Tex. Two to the good. Nightwatch needs to score. Two goals here to extend his season and give himself a chance. Just a chance of making the finals. I mean, what a season it has been as well for Nightwatch. He had a really poor start when we go back to Bucharest in November. And then suddenly in the E-Champions League, he just exploded into this new player. It's almost like all the research and all the tactics that he'd been uh, working on throughout the months finally paid off. But now it's all going to come to nothing if he doesn't qualify for the E-World Cup. Yes, of course, he has the memories. Yes, of course, he has the prize money. But we know that a player like Nightwatch, he wants to be the E-World Cup. I think that's a great point you just made there because it's never been about the money. It's never been about, you know, X and Y, all the intangible, the tangible things, I should say. It's been about being a finalist and being a champion. And one man who knows a lot about that this year is, of course, F2 Tex. Perfect Swiss from him, 4-0. And, oh. and now he's two to the good against a man who's fighting for his, for his life, for his season right now in FIFA 19. But Danny Da Costa is stretching his legs down that right-hand side. Hullet turns away from Vieira. Eusebio looks for the fake shot. He's going to actually almost get the ball back, but unfortunately for Nightwatch there, it was two of the longest-limbed players on the game. Who are in position there to stop that. Virgil van Dijk and Patrick Vieira are always difficult to get around them. Nightwatch knows he's going to get chances, though. He just needs to take one of those chances and try and keep Tex at bay. Oh, Tex has managed to keep that one in, and Rude Hullet there. Perfect player to have in position to win the header, and Nightwatch comes away now. We saw the quote from Tex earlier. I can manage games. If I'm 1-0 up with 20 minutes to go, I can win that game. Well, he's 2-0 up with 30 minutes to go. Let's see if he can hold on here or whether he pushes for maybe a third goal. And Bappe then for Nightwatch. Oh, tried to use his body to just shield the ball there and it just allowed enough of a chance for FG Tex to poke a leg in and win the ball back. And now you're looking at the counter-attack and it's pretty much four and four on those counter-attacks, but great tackle there in the midfield for Nightwatch. He can step forward, Eusebio. Oh, oh Ronaldo's touch has let him down. Oh, he keeps focus, oh. but he can't find the finish. Big chance there for Nightwatch and I think Cristiano Ronaldo has let him down a little bit. And I think you can see the, the expression on Nightwatch's face. Kind of says it all. Ronaldo looked like he was clean through, but just couldn't get it. But he's created the chance, control. Dan. He's created yeah. the chance. That's what he has to keep in mind here. Well, I mean, I say that to him if he's eliminated from the competition. Well, you created the chances. He's going to be frustrated with that. But still time left. 30 minutes. He has shown in the last 10 minutes in game that he is getting into the dangerous areas. That will naturally make Tex worry a little bit as well. He'll be saying, all right, my watch is starting to create. I need to maybe start playing the ball around, which is going to encourage potentially more mistakes of giving that ball away in those dangerous areas for Nightwatch. And how much would you pay to have that little red book in your hands as a FIFA player? Uh, it's probably worth about 75 grand, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good point. Well, here we go. Back underway then. The chance missed for Nightwatch. It was a big one. We are seeing changes here. Mbappe starting the attack, and you can see again there is going to be space in behind here for F2 Tex. Bale trying to get across to deal with the Frenchman. Bale does superbly well there to win the ball back. And not only that, Dan, he's picked a pass as well. And we need something from here, and there's actually so much space on that. Through ball to R9. Oh, no, he's trying to fight here, and Ramos just bullies him off the ball. Shake of the head there from Nightwatch, but he's getting closer and closer. We need to keep an eye. On that clock, though, now, Dan, because time really does become a factor. It's how many chances are you going to be able to create in that time? How many times can you win the ball back? How many times is Tex going to allow you to have chances? If his game management is that good, if it's been improving, then you're not going to have the opportunity that often 
as I think that goes for a goal kick. So that's actually a good result for Nightwatch. I think Tex was trying to encourage a corner there. And now Nightwatch goes again. And he just has to work on an attack-by-attack attack basis at this point. Can't even look at the whole game. Just needs to say, I need to score from every attack possible. Well, here's R9. Little five-star combination after the ball roll. Mbappe turns back inside. Ronaldo, the run from Mbappe continues, and he just couldn't manage to get the ball through the ever-present Rude Hullet in that central midfield position. There's too much space in the middle for Tex. Nightwatch really needs to up this pressure. Switch to constant pressure. Make sure you're using that RB button as well as the A button, as well as just directing everyone towards the ball. Yes, OK, there's going to be spaces at the back, but you've got to win the ball back soon. R9 into Hullet. Yellow from Tex. That was a waste. And now Nightwatch can potentially start another attack. You see, maybe that was a little bit rushed. Yes, time is a factor here. However, possession is so, so vital at this point. And a big tackle there from Patrick Vieira is going to release Mbappe. Ronaldo into Neymar. Nightwatch with a chance. What a tackle from F2 Tex. He's still got possession. Three-point turn inside. Neymar can't scoop turn away from Vieira. We look at the previous results between these two players. When Tex beat Nightwatch 4-3 at Bucharest, it was so close, only a goal in it. Nightwatch beat Tex 6-4 in the E Champions League, only two goals in it. The best in the world of Tex going up against Nightwatch, who, current, who was in 21st when he started this tournament. I mean, I, I'd say that Nightwatch can be very proud of his performance throughout the season and here today. But again, we have to go back to the fact that he wants to be qualifying for the World Cup. He is good enough to be at the World Cup. Don't get me wrong. But if he doesn't win here, he's not going to get there. And he's now got, what, like 19 minutes in game. He's created a few chances, but he needs to put one of them away. I mean, you talk about one of the quotes that we heard earlier saying that it was an absolute war yesterday in the Swiss rounds. And that is the level of competition that we have here. You know, this is the best in the world right now throughout the entire season of FIFA 19 competing and every single player, every single game, every single leg, Dan, is an absolute war. It has been fascinating to see the best in the world go up against each other. I mean, one person who will be happy with is Zidane. Zidane, who was eliminated from the competition yesterday, but now Nightwatch is losing. Ryan was losing earlier as well. He could still potentially hold on to that top 16 spot as this tournament develops, but I'm sure it's very unlikely. Well, there is still time here for Nightwatch, and it was a beautiful turn. Oh, what a tackle from Sergio Ramos. You can see what the thought process there's, was there of Nightwatch. He went one way the first time to manage to beat his man. He almost managed to do it the second time as well, but Tex gets right. Such little time left. We have seen two goals scored in this amount of time, of course, but Tex is just going to hold on to the ball and he's going to frustrate Nightwatch at this point. Nightwatch's whole season, seven minutes left to try and do something with it. A great tackle there to win the ball back, and that's at least the start, but he can't hold on to it. If he can hold on to the ball, if he can get one attack in the next couple of minutes, Whoa! maybe there's a chance. How well did Tex just move that ball, though, under pressure? Six minutes left, and as you say, Dan, it's a case of can you get the ball back? Do you have time to create those chances now? Or is Tex going to be the one signing the notice here that Nightwatch's season is over? Ronaldo! Still time. Van der Sar gets it forward. Neymar dispossessed, yeah. and that could be it. But no, Neymar's going to win the foot race here. Da Costa. Nightwatch has to score from this situation. Gets a little bit of fortune going his way. Mbappe, out to bail, into the box. Van der Sar comes and claims. And that should be enough for F2 Tex. As Nightwatch, I'm sure now, will be starting to think about the rude chances, the missed opportunities he's had throughout this game. But ultimately, we have to congratulate him on an incredible season. Second in the E-Champions League, of course, so close to winning it. But it's not going to be enough at the end. He came up against the best in the world here at playoffs. And here's R9 looking to compel the misery for Nightwatch and F2 Tex. Three up on aggregate now. And the man quite simply doesn't know how to lose. Another quarterfinal for Tex here at playoffs. And did we expect anything different? He is on the same side of the bracket as MS Dasari, though. It means that if he carries on winning, we potentially have a semi-final matchup of Tex versus Dasari. We won't get the final that maybe everyone dreamed of. But for Nightwatch, his run is over. He won't be the E-World Cup. He's had an incredible season.
And again, Doc tonight, watch. We said it about every single player who won't make it into those top 16. A phenomenal season, but there's only one story here. And that is the continued form of F2 Tex taking down Dr. Nightwatch. He'll move on in the tournament.